click the link in the description to download your own copy of this video's problem. Hey guys, welcome back to another fantastic chemistry video. And today we're going to talk about acidity some more. Here's the question. Explain why ethanol is less acidic than acetic acid. It's a classic question. Uh, really common on organic chemistry exams. We'll put, in the, we'll put a question up there. We'll say, okay, here's the pK of this. Here's the pK of that. Why? Why are the pKs different? You have to understand why and explain it to us. Okay? Before we get into this too much, we have to decide what exactly is acidity. What does it mean to be acidic? Well, it means you donate a proton. Okay, that's true. You donate a proton. Well, what makes you better or worse at it? Or how do we measure whether you're better or worse at delivering a proton? Well, we deal with Ka. And what's Ka? Well, Ka is the concentration of hydronium because we're dealing in acids and bases in water. Concentration of the conjugate acid. And that is all divided by the concentration of the parent acid. Okay? So that is Ka. Now the bigger the Ka, the more acidic you are. The larger the Ka, the more acidic you are. The larger the Ka, the more acidic you are. I can't harp on that enough. The larger the Ka, the more acidic you are. Say it after me. The larger the Ka, the more acidic you are. What makes a Ka large? Concentrations in the numerator. Just like any math problem. Divide a large number by a small number, you get a large number. Divide a large number by a small number, you get a large number. Divide a small number by a large number, you get a small number. Okay? So if the numerator is large, the denominator is small, the Ka is huge. That's how you determine acidity. You compare Ka's. If these numbers are huge, that means there's an abundance and concentration of these two species. That's what it means. Okay? That means this concentration must be very low. The parent acid's concentration must be low. That means it must be very acidic in water for it to be low. I didn't say it was zero, though. I said it was low. Okay? Strong acid, it will be zero. But in a weak acid, this will just be a low number. Okay? So what are we looking at? We're comparing one acid to another. Well, if we're going to compare one acid to another, we can't talk about hydronium because they're all creating hydronium in water. Hydronium stability in water is the same no matter what acid you're using. It's the concentration of the conjugate acid we're going to worry about, and it's the stability of the conjugate acid that we're going to worry about because if the conjugate acid's concentration increases the concentration of hydronium is going to increase too because it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. Okay, now let's see that in practice. Let me just clear my palette here. Let's see that in practice. So we have this reaction. Hydronium is going to be one of our products plus that conjugate base right there. Let's write the Ka for this. Ka is going to be Hydronium and according to the pKa it's 1 times 10 to the negative 16. Not very acidic. 1 times 10 to the negative 16. That means these numbers must be small and that number is probably pretty big to get a very small number over here. So the concentration of this and this, the conjugate acid and the conjugate base are probably, well, no, not probably, they are very small. Very small. Okay. Bottom one. Hydronium, of course, is the conjugate acid. And acetate is the conjugate base. And while we're here, let's resonate. And we'll have something. And we'll have the resonance form. Now the Ka expression for this acid on the bottom will be Ka 
equals hydronium again. And this will be the acetate ion. It's all over the concentration of the parent acid. And that equals 1 times 10 to the negative 4.74. I mean, we could work this out to be the exact number. We could just use our calculator. Oops, sorry, that's getting a little smaller. I'll put it underneath. Equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4. 0.74. All right, so that's a very large number. In comparison to this one, this is a very large number in comparison. So that means this one's more acidic because it has larger numbers here. The numbers here are small. The numbers here are large. So that means in solution, this is building up compared to that one. This one's not going to be very high. So if I went looking in the solution, I wouldn't find very many of these. If I went looking in this solution, I'd find a whole bunch of these. So this is more acidic. Now, we knew that from the pKa. Why did I go through all this? Because I wanted to examine the conjugate base. Students always want to just jump. Well, I know this is more stable because it has more oxygen. Nonsense answer. That's a nonsense answer. Sugar has a lot of oxygen, but it's not very acidic. Okay? You can't just say stuff like that. Those are general chemistry things you say then they're more or less nonsense there too. What the truth is, is you have to examine the conjugate base. You have to look at what's happening to the electrons, to the negative charge, to the stability. If something has um, more resonance, for example, it is more stable, less attractive to a proton. Therefore, it will accumulate in concentration. Something that is distributes this negative charge over many different atoms is able to be less attractive to a proton. Therefore, less attractive, less collisions, less reactions. Okay? Because remember, you have to collide. You have to collide with enough energy in the right orientation for a reaction to take place. Well, in this case, the resonance forms are spreading that oxygen, sorry, that negative charge, to two different oxygens. So those oxygens are delta negative. They're not 100% negative. So that means the hydronium, in this case, is only about 50% attracted to that one, 50% attracted to that one. So they're not going to collide as often, and they're going to collide with less speed because they're not as attractive, right? Here you have a true negative that's very attracted to a true positive. They're going to collide a lot more and with a lot more speed. So they're more reactive. That's why this pKa is so low compared to that one, because this conjugate base can resonate, spreading its negative charge across numerous atoms, making no atom that attractive in comparison to the oxygens. If we could resonate it more, it would be more stable. Okay, Think sulfuric acid. It has three oxygens that can spread its negative charge to, not just two, and that's a strong acid, okay? So now that's why acetic acid has a pKa so much lower than ethanol, even though they're very similar in structure, okay? It's always the conjugate base you have to examine. I know you don't want to do that. I know students hate doing that, but trust me, you're going to want to do that because that's where the answer is, okay? All right, guys, now I know this was a lot, so maybe watch the video again, write your own notes, think about it on your own, do this question again for yourself, and think about reactivity, collisions, and attractions, okay? All right, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, slap that like button, leave a comment below, let me know what I can do to help you out in your organic chemistry class. Let me know if this video was helpful. Let me know if you understood my, my explanation. I know it's a little bit abstract, but you can totally do this. And you know what, guys, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It really does help me out. Slap that subscribe button to become a member of the Dr. Betts team so you can pass organic chemistry too and you can be on your way to a brilliant career. All right, guys, now with that, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon. Email drbetts at protonmail.com if you would like a copy of every problem in this series.